It's been just over a year since I made a video detailing eight tips for the Maps app on iPhone, and it's fair to say that quite a lot has changed since then. With that in mind, I thought I'd put together a full tutorial for how to use the Maps app on your iPhone from start to finish. Whether you're planning a road trip in the car or whether you're looking to get around a city on public transport, the Maps app on your iPhone is actually really capable these days, and in my opinion, is definitely able to compete with the likes of Google, but it can be a little complicated if you're not sure what you're doing with it. Also, there's a major new feature coming to iOS 17 that I think is gonna be a game changer for a lot of people, and I will talk about that later on in this video. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing that I would recommend that you do is set your maps, settings, and preferences. This really doesn't take long to do, and in my experience, it's the kind of thing you should only need to do once and never have to repeat again. Open the Maps app and tap on your Apple ID, which you can see to the right of the Search Maps field. Scroll down if you need to and tap on Preferences. Much of what you can see in here should be relatively self-explanatory. If you tend to use Maps only when you're driving, you can set driving as your preferred mode of getting directions, for example. Then under each of the directions sections, you can set specific preferences, such as avoiding hills while walking, avoiding motorways while driving, and avoiding busy roads while cycling. Under public transport, you can choose to enable or disable the modes of public transport that you use. And if you're someone who submits photos to the Maps app, you can get public credit for doing so using a nickname that you choose. If you then tap into Maps settings, you'll have access to some additional settings. It hopefully goes without saying, but I would click into location and ensure that location access is enabled while using the app and also ensure that precise location is enabled. Without these, you're gonna to struggle to use the app effectively. As you scroll down through here, you'll notice that some of the preferences are repeated, things like your preferred type of travel and direction preferences. But there are a few settings that are worth taking an additional look at in here. If you tap into driving underneath directions, for example, you'll see that you've got a section called show in navigation where you can toggle the compass on or off as well as the speed limit. Further down this list, you've got the option to allow you to share your ETA with someone, to toggle the air quality index and weather conditions on or off in your map. And down at the very bottom of this page, you've got a really useful option called show parked location. With this toggled on, your phone will attempt to intelligently work out when you've parked your car and will automatically make a mark of it on the map. This can come in really handy if you need to navigate your way back to it at a later point when you've forgotten where your car is parked. Also, if applicable to you, it is worth taking just a couple of minutes to set up Maps extensions. Extensions are essentially other apps on your iPhone that can integrate with your Maps apps, specifically ride sharing apps, table booking apps, and food delivery apps. So for example, on this specific phone, I've got both Uber and OpenTable installed. Because I've got these installed, if I tap on my Apple ID, then choose Preferences, scroll down and choose Map Settings, then scroll down on this page, you'll see a section called Extensions. This is then separated out into Ride Booking and Restaurant Booking. You'll need to tap into both of these and enable the apps that you would like to run as extensions, otherwise they won't show in your Maps app. It is also worth toggling the show rides from new apps option, as this means that in the future when you add applicable apps, they will automatically be added to your Maps app and you won't have to come back to the settings page to manually add them in. By the way, there is an accompanying PDF for this video with full step-by-step -step guide, including screenshots, and you can access it along with all PDFs moving forward and the growing library of old ones for just $5 a month. Click the link in the description of this video that says get the PDF. Let's take a few minutes to confirm everything that you can see on the map screen. In this example, you can see that the map is taken up approximately the top three quarters of the screen. And then down in the bottom quarter, we've got a search section and we can tap down there to make this section larger. We can then tap at the top of that window to make it drop all the way down to the bottom, giving us a full screen view of the map. You can obviously see various different labels on the map, things like roads, public transport stations, shops, gyms, public gardens, anything that would be relevant on this particular map. If you tap on one of these labels, you can see that they are all contextual and will give you some more information options. For example here, I've tapped on a restaurant label and because of that, I can now see information about that particular restaurant. If I tap at the top of the window, that window will then maximize out to full screen and I can scroll down to view all of the information about this particular restaurant. 
The depth and breadth of information available to you is of course going to vary depending on the specific location. But here you can see, for example, that as well as getting directions to this particular restaurant, I can call them, I can view their website, I can even view their menu. Although you should note that this may require you to download an additional app like Yelp. Further down on the screen, you can view additional photos and reviews from TripAdvisor. And below that, you've got a good to know section, which is full of information that has been added by the Maps community. Further down still, you can view things like the opening hours, the phone number and website, as well as their physical address. And at the very bottom of the screen, you have an option called add to favorite. Tapping on this will do exactly as it suggests and add this particular location to your favorites for easy access later on. To return to the map at any time, you would simply tap the cross in the upper right of the card. Although it is also worth noting that next to that, you do have a share option where you can share this location with someone else using all the usual sharing methods. Back on the map, and you can see a couple of buttons at the top right of the screen. The top button is a map visibility button. Tapping on that will allow you to choose between four different visual styles of map. The default is explore, which is the one that we've been using so far. You can choose driving, which will use TomTom data to include up-to-date traffic information in the map while you're browsing. Roads showing in amber signify heavy traffic. Roads showing in red signify pretty much standstill traffic. This could obviously be useful if you're planning a trip somewhere and you wanna get a feel for how busy the roads are at the location. You also have a public transport option where you can see the individual public transport lines and you have a satellite map option. Beneath that is a compass arrow. Tapping on this option will immediately take you to your current location. And directly beneath that, you have the option to toggle between a 3D and a 2D version of the map. In the bottom right, if you've enabled it, you'll have the option to see the current weather conditions and temperature, as well as the air quality index. And in the bottom left, you have Apple's version of Google Street View, which is their look around feature. Tap on this and you'll see that the top part of the screen will display a street view style visual of that particular part of the map. And this is represented by a pair of binoculars that will show in the map itself. The cone pointing out from the binoculars represents the direction in which you're facing in the current view. You can tap and hold on the binoculars icon and drag them around the map to change where you're looking at. And you can tap and drag in the look around window to change the direction in which you're facing. You can tap on a part of the look around window to move forward in a particular direction and you can maximize the screen here, as well as closing this window by tapping done. Look around isn't available everywhere, it's being rolled out by Apple starting with major cities and while the rollout is undeniably slow, it is getting there. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, why not consider signing up to my newsletter, The Proper Weekly? I include some tech news from the week, a behind the scenes of what's happening here on the channel, as well as a tip for an item in the Apple ecosystem. The newsletter goes out each Friday, it's free to join, and I'll include a sign-up link in the description of this video. So one of the first things that you're likely gonna want to do with the Maps app is to search for a location, either to get directions to it or to find out more about it. You do this by tapping into the field that says Search Maps. If I'm honest, this next screen is probably a little bit unnecessarily complicated, but I will explain what everything is here. If you've already searched for things, they will show in your recent section here. So if there's somewhere that you've been recently and you want to quickly get directions back to that location, you should be able to simply select it from this list. In the nearby section, Maps will try to suggest locations that it thinks most people will want to get directions to. This could include things like bars, corner shops, hotels, parking, and the options here will most likely vary depending on where you're viewing. The rest of this fairly massive page is entirely dedicated to guides, which I will cover as a separate section in a few moments, but if you're not interested in guides, you can essentially disregard all of this part of the screen. When you tap into the search maps field, you have the usual keyboard option for searching. You can search using broad or very specific terms. So for example, if you type in Shoreditch, Maps will return Shoreditch High Street Underground Station as the number one result, but immediately below that, you can see Shoreditch Hackney, the neighborhood. You could type in a full address or a partial address or a postal or zip code. You could type in the name of a business. So I guess the most obvious example here is to search for McDonald's. The one thing you do need to understand here is that if you're not at the location where you're searching, if you see a result that offers you to search nearby, Maps means that it will search nearby your current location rather than the location that you're currently browsing. 
So in this example, even though I'm browsing around the Shoreditch London area, my physical location is currently Canterbury in Kent. If I tap on search nearby, maps will attempt to find McDonald's locations near Canterbury. But you can see immediately under that, it has returned McDonald's locations near the area in which I'm browsing. If I tap on one of those, I'll be able to view information about that specific restaurant. If you tap on a location on the map or in the search results, the big blue button is your option to get directions to that specific location. The icon and the time will show you the preferred method of transport and the time that it would take to get you from your current location to this specific place via that method of transport. So here, for example, you can see how long it would take me to drive to this particular location at this exact moment in time. However, when you tap that button, you can see that you have additional options for creating your journey. The first most obvious thing that you may want to change here is where it says my location. If you're planning a journey for the future, you may want to set a different start and finish point than your current location. To do this, tap into where it says my location and then use the search box to choose a different start location. The journey on screen will change accordingly. So now we have our start location and our finish location and immediately underneath that, we have the option to add a stop. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's a detour that you might want to add en route during your journey. Don't worry about the fact that the stop shows underneath your finishing location. We can maneuver the stop around once we've added it. So here, for example, I now have a starting point, a finishing point and a stop immediately beneath that. But if I tap and hold on the little icon to the right of the stop, I can drag that stop into the middle, changing the order in which the directions will be displayed. Your route is displayed from top to bottom with the start point at the top, the end destination at the bottom and the stop in the middle. You can do this for up to 15 stops on a route. Beneath that, you have an option titled now. If you tap on that, you have the option to change the date and time that you plan to leave your starting point or arrive at your destination. And Maps will do its best to work out the route for you based on this new information. So for example, if you choose 10 a.m. on Friday as your arrive by date and time, Maps will attempt to suggest a time which you would want to set out on your journey. Do keep in mind that this is just an estimation based on historical traffic data, and I wouldn't set my watch by it, but it should give you a bit of an idea to work from. Back on the previous screen, there is also a button called avoid. And if you tap on this, you can choose to avoid tolls and or motorways in the route that's calculated for you. When you're ready to go, you would choose a route. If applicable, maps will give you different options and you can view them in two ways. If you scroll down on this page, you'll be able to see an overview of the route along with a green go button next to it. This will show you the estimated time taken to complete this particular route, the number of miles or kilometers that you're gonna travel and any other important information, such as whether it includes tolls or whether you're passing through a low emission zone or congestion charge zone, for example. On the map itself, the route that you're currently viewing will show in a solid blue line, whereas the additional route will show in a lighter blue line. You can tap on any of those light blue lines to make that the current default route. Tapping on go will begin turn by turn navigation using your preferred method of travel. If you've got your phone connected to CarPlay, all of this will of course be handled by the CarPlay screen. But if you've got your phone mounted on a dashboard in front of you, for example, you can swipe left and right on the black part of the display up at the top to view individual parts of the route if you wish. Also, you'll notice these two buttons just underneath the black banner. The top one allows you to toggle between a route overview and turn by turn directions. The one directly underneath that lets you choose which audio options you would like whilst driving. The top option is to include all audio, including turn by turn directions being spoken to you. The bottom option is to mute all spoken audio, while the middle option will mute turn by turn directions, but will let you know of any important information such as hazards or speed cameras. It's also worth noting that whilst you're driving, you can access Siri and say report an incident and use this to report things like crashes or hazards in the road or speed cameras. The method of searching for a route when using public transport is identical to searching for a route to use when driving. The only real difference is how your search results will be displayed in Apple Maps and the way that the app will behave whilst you're traveling. So here, for example, you can see that I've searched for a route between two points in Manhattan. My preferred method of directions is usually driving, so that's what it's defaulted to, but I can tap on the train icon to switch to public transport. You can then see all of the different routes that are available with an overview of the transport methods that you'll need to take, as well as a cost for the journey if that information is available to Maps. 
When you choose Go, you can see that the Maps app will give you detailed instructions about which station to walk to, which train to take, and which direction you want to be traveling in. If you've got phone signal, the app will keep up with you as you travel and prompt you as and when you need to be ready to switch from one method of public transport to another. Okay, so we've talked about moving around the map itself and we've talked about getting directions to a specific location, which covers the majority of what you're likely to be using the Maps app for. Let's take a few moments to talk about how you can store locations for quick access at a later point. You can see that immediately underneath the search maps box, there is a section called favorites. This is exactly what it sounds like and it's where your Maps app will store everything that you've added to your favorites list. And there are a number of ways that you can add a location to your favorites. You can tap the add button and then search for a location just like we did earlier on when we were searching for a location to navigate to. When you select that location, it will be added to your favorites. Or when viewing the information card of a location, you can tap the more button and choose add to favorites. If the location that you would like to store as a favorite is a point on the map rather than an actual physical address, there is still a way that you can do this. You would simply zoom into the specific point on the map, then tap and hold for a second at the exact point that you would like to store. This will drop a pin. You can then tap the more button and add this particular pin to your favorites. The other way that you can store and share information about locations is by creating and viewing guides. Guides are Apple Maps version of the old Lonely Planet books, where you can store a number of different locations that are usually all linked by being in a specific area. So if you scroll down, for example, you can see some of the guides that Apple Maps includes within the Maps app. Guides for cities like London, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Toronto. Guides can be generic and cover lots of different things in a specific city, or they can be more focused, a food guide or a museum guide or a cycling guide, for example. When viewing a guide, you have the option to save that guide to your phone, which of course is useful if you think that you're gonna be in a location with low phone signal coverage at any time. And as you scroll through the guide, you'll notice the plus icon next to each of the locations. This allows you to add that particular location to one of your own personal guides, although more on that in just a second. If you tap on explore guides, you can use this page to view all the different guides that are available. These are obviously great if you're visiting a specific location and you wanna get a bit more information about that place before you go, but you can also use them yourself by creating your own personal guides. To do this, come all the way back to the main map screen and just underneath the recent section, you'll see a section called My Guides. Tap on New Guide to create a new guide. In List, you can give your guide a name. Tap on the camera icon to add a cover photo to your guide. Once you've created the guide, you can then tap into the guide and you'll see an option called add a place. Tap on this to search for a location and use the plus icons to add that particular location to your guide. If you then swipe from right to left on a guide, you'll see that you have the option to delete it or to share it. Unfortunately, a feature that Apple still haven't brought to guides in Maps is the ability to work collaboratively on a guide. It's a shame because the guides feature is actually really good if you're planning a trip somewhere. When you share a guide with someone, you are essentially sending them a read-only version of it. I'd hope that collaborative guides would have come with iOS 17. Sadly, they haven't. Perhaps we'll see them in iOS 18. So I've been capturing the majority of this video in iOS 16, but as I make this video, we are only a couple of months away from iOS 17 releasing, and I do have the beta version of that software. Although the improvements to maps in iOS 17 are pretty slim in terms of their quantity, there is one particular addition to the iOS 17 version of maps that I think a lot of people are gonna be really, really happy with. In iOS 17, you can download sections of the map to your phone to use offline. And those sections of maps will update automatically each time that you connect to both power and data. To do this, tap on your Apple ID and you'll see that there is a section immediately underneath guides called offline maps tap into here. Your phone may well suggest a particular area for you to download, usually based off of things like your home location. Tap on download new map. Search for a specific location or city that you would like to download. I'll search for a city and you'll see that maps returns a view that shows the city with a rectangle around it. This is maps attempting to create an area that covers the bulk of that particular city or location, but you can pinch and zoom and move around to change this if you wish and Maps will show you how much space your map is gonna take up. Once downloaded, if you then go back to your Apple ID window and tap back into Offline Maps, you see the downloaded map showing in its own section at the top of the screen. 
Beneath that, you have some options under the settings section. You can choose to make map downloads only happen on Wi-Fi or on Wi-Fi and cellular. You can make updates automatic or toggle this off, and you can choose to optimize your iPhone storage in relation to these downloaded maps. Keep in mind that these downloads are quite large, so you may want to keep an eye on this particular section of your phone over time. But if you have poor data reception in a particular area where you live, or perhaps you're traveling somewhere and you know that you may not have great phone reception when you get there, this is going to be an amazing feature. Just a friendly reminder that this feature is only in iOS 17, so if you're watching this video pre-September 2023, you won't have access to this unless you're using one of the software betas. If you're watching after September 2023 and you've updated to the latest version of iOS 17, you should have access to this feature. So there you go, that's a detailed guide to using the Maps app on iPhone, currently on iOS 16, but this will also be applicable to iOS 17 as soon as that launches in a couple of months time as I make this video. What do you think? Is Maps at the point now where you would consider using it as your number one app? Or are you still more a fan of Google Maps? Or is there another Maps app entirely that you use? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.